My dear friends, we are gathered together on this holy night to begin the Easter Triduum. United with the church throughout the world, we commemorate the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin as he did at the Passover table of the Last Supper. Today, Archbishop Hebda, united with the priests and people of our diocese, consecrated the Holy Chrism and blessed the oils for use in anointing of the sick and in preparation of catechumens for baptism. Tonight we receive these oils, which we will use in the celebration of the sacraments. By means of these powerful symbols, the crucified and risen Savior will continue in our midst and work the work he began at his death and resurrection, forgiveness, healing, and new life. Behold the oil of the sick, blessed by our bishop, sent to us for the anointing of all who suffer illness. Behold the oil of the catechumens, blessed by our bishop, sent to us for anointing of our catechumens in preparation for their baptism. The sacred chrism, oil mixed with sweet perfume, and consecrated by our bishop, sent to us for the anointing of the baptized, who are to be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Praise God in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore to participate in this most sacred supper 
in which your only begotten son went about to hand himself over to death and trusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. 
How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. 
he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. My friends, the gospel of the Lord. In a moment, we will celebrate the washing of the feet. But I just wanted to make one brief comment. And that is the two acts, aspects of humility that we see in this gospel passage we just heard. The first is Jesus himself, who is the son of God, washes his apostles' feet. And of course, Peter has the normal reaction, oh no, you're not going to wash my feet. And that was done out of love and respect. But he said, you don't quite understand right now, Peter. Unless I wash you, he said, well then, <laughs> my hands and my everything as well. You know, and he said, well, that's not necessary. So there was another humility, and that was the humility of Peter, who allowed Jesus to wash his feet. And all of us need both of those sides of humility. There are times when we have to humble ourselves in service of others. And there's other times we have to humble ourselves so that others may bless us. So you can ponder that while we do the washing of the feet. Think about those moments in your life when you've experienced both of those kinds of humility. Who's first? <laughs> <laughs>
Bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, united in this Eucharist banquet of praise and thanksgiving with Pope Francis and Archbishop Hebda, we pray for all priests, religious, and deacons who are called to be an image of Christ's mercy in service and ministry, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the baptized who are called to be the body of Christ in the world, and for those who daily wash the feet of others by their kindness, service, and compassion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, for the Holy Spirit's wisdom, for leaders in the search for peace and hope for the people of Ukraine, Haiti, and the Holy Land, and for all Christians unable to celebrate the Eucharist this night because of illness, natural disasters, persecution, or lack of priests, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, 
that all those carrying the burden of illness, grief, anxiety, or guilt may be guided towards health, wholeness, and faith through the care of those around them, and especially for Larry and Pat Clemens, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they be called to their place at the heavenly banquet, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that Christ, our Lord and teacher, may help us to follow his divine mandate to serve and to love all who we encounter. For these and for all the prayers we hold in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for being our God, for dying for us, that we might have true faith and hope in eternal life. We place all our needs in you and ask you to answer us as we pray in your name, who reign with the Father and the Spirit, God, forever and ever. Oh. 
at this our offering may be found pleasing to God our almighty creator grant us O Lord we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted patterns of everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Archbishop Bernard, and all those who, holding to the faith, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being in praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he suffered for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. He took the bread and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts which you have given us, the pure victim, the holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kind countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, and the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by our hands, by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy and body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, 
with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Mycelinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him, you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Now let us share Christ peace. is the Christ among us. Happy are we who share in the fullness of his supper. Lord.
Let us pray. Grant almighty God that just as we are renewed by the supper of your son in this present age, so may we enjoy his banquet for all eternity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
See?